to see you all again. Well, you can see me. I can't necessarily see you just at the time being, but you know what I mean. It's great for you to join with us in worship. Our service this evening comes from this little book, Morning and Evening Prayer Seasonal Services, and we use the Easter service as we are still in Easter season. Just one other note about the service, and thank you, by the way, to everybody who has given us various sections for the service to use today. There is a theme of peace and patience running through the service. Both of the hymns are paraphrases of the one prayer by St Francis of Assisi, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. And the reading from Galatians picks up on the theme of peace and patience also. The prayers also will have the prayer of St Francis of Assisi before taking up that theme of peace and patience with words from St Ignatius Loyola. And so we begin our service with the greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. And we remind ourselves of why we are tuning into this service this evening. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving and to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins and to pray for the needs of the world that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord, all praise to his name. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people into new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And now I hand you over to Canon Ronnie, who will take us through a form of confession. The response to the words, Father, forgive us, is save us and help us. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will in our lives. Father, forgive us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. And sometimes for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's not your faith in you. O Master, grant that I may never seek. So much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace, where there's despair in life let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And 
and were the sadness ever joy. O Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving all ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. A reading from Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 to 26. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks very much to Gillian for our reading. There's a few verses in the reading that I want to think about. We'll start, as will probably be no surprise to you whenever you know the things that I go to, as my happy place within preaching, my happy place within the Bible, love. And at the minute, all of us, you can see the true colours coming out in people as to what they are preaching, what they are saying online as everybody's tempers get fraught and everybody starts to let down their guard. I'm going back to my happy place as well and I will honestly say it. Love is the place that I begin. Verse 14. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. But I'll admit something at this point. Loving your neighbour can be hard. I'm finding it hard to love some of my neighbours at the minute. Sp specifically two examples for now. The first neighbour I'm finding it hard to love is the neighbour who walks the wrong way around the one-way system in Tesco's. The other neighbour that I'm finding it hard to love at the minute is the one who breaks the social distancing rules and physically touches me in order to then walk six feet away from me so as they can stay six feet away. If you have already touched me, then it kind of annihilates anything that you do thereafter. But love is the first fruit of the Spirit. And producing fruit, any fruit, including love, takes work and it takes nurture. And then later on in our reading, we hear of the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
there is no law against such things. For those of you who have children, you may well think the fruit of the Spirit is a coconut, but that's something completely different. Any of you who that reference is lost on, while you're on YouTube watching this service, go and look up the fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut, it's by an Australian church. They brought out a song and it is quite funny. Note how even during the lockdown, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these things. I need not labour this point, but being kind, gentle, loving, generous, having self-control by staying socially distanced from people are important now more than ever. But I did leave two gifts out of that list. Peace and patience, which perhaps sometimes seem like an odd combination, especially if we begin with patience first. Patience is a virtue. Possess it if you can. Find seldom in a woman and never in a man. The old saying always goes. And it isn't easy being patient. If we're honest at the minute, all of you are having your patience tested in some way. If you have children running around the house all day, if you're locked in the house with your significant other and there are certain quirks that are annoying you, if you're separated from your friends and family and those that you love. We all have to work on being patient and acknowledge that there's not a lot of peace in these parts of our current situation. And it seems as if we have little peace when forging patience. But Paul knew what he was doing when he put this list together. There's an old adage, don't pray for God to give you patience. He'll put obstacles in your way and make you work at being patient. And that may not be far off being the truth. We have little patience in getting there. But sorry, we have little peace in getting there, even if the two fruits are listed together. So where do we get peace, especially at a time like this? Psalm 21 verse 1. I lift my eyes towards the hills, from where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. A psalm that is very familiar to all of us. From where is my help to come? Whenever we need help to get peace, it comes from the Lord. I turned instantly to the psalms for this because it has been said multiple times before, the whole Bible speaks to us, but the psalms speak for us. They give voice to human encounters with real life issues. They struggle with things. They allow you to get angry and they give you words when you can't find the right ones. A bit like formal prayer. Those of you who have been tuning into the daily services will know also I have been going through liturgical services by David Adams mainly and this book of prayers for Anglicans again by David Adam. Because formal prayer can give us words whenever the situations are so strange and so different to us that we don't know what to say. And for me, there's peace in that. Peace from structure and routine are gone, but we still have liturgy. And we will look at the comfort of liturgy in our service next week. There's also peace for me from church and biblical tradition. Knowing that people have struggled with issues for generations, and prayers written by church fathers, saints and other exemplary Christians throughout the centuries have left us a framework to find peace amidst chaos. It's always useful to remember that any prayer for peace would not have been penned in an easy, peaceful life. It's the result of agonising soul searching for that peace, which the writer doesn't yet have. There's also peace in nature. And after I do my morning services every day, I go out for a walk in nature round Ballymacormick Point. And that's one of the ways that I spend my time with God and reset myself for the rest of the day. And there's a peace from nature also in our Celtic and monastic traditions, which the Church of Ireland is built upon. Through our liturgy, we have structure, prayer and appropriate Bible readings. And it gives us an understanding 
that God is still in control of the world. So perhaps real peace is forged alongside patience in testing times. We look for peace, we search for peace, we find peace. It takes patience to get there, but we do get there. And once we have patience, then we get a deeper peace, not just a fleeting glance at something that took away our anxieties for now. The traditional blessing in the Church of Ireland service is the peace that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. The peace that passes all understanding. We can't understand it. And yet, it's so great that it is peace. John 14, 27, verse well known to all of us. My peace I give to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Again, it's a peace which isn't found in the world, in our work or in anything else. Real peace is forged alongside patience in difficult testing times. Paul knew what he was doing when he listed the fruits of the Spirit. Start with love, love of joy, peace and patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There is no law against such things. We have to work at them. It is difficult to get there. But through working at being patient, we get a deeper sense of peace, that peace which the world cannot give. So be patient. We will come out the other side. But for now, work at having peace in whatever your current situation is. Please do have an attitude of prayer and some time of peace as we listen to Diane singing, Lord make us servants of your peace before our time of prayer. Amen. Lord, make us servants of your peace. Where there is hate, may we so love. Where there is hurt, may we forgive. Where there is strife, may we make one. Where all is doubt, may we so faith. Where all is gloom, may we so hope. Where all is night, may we so light. Where all is tears, may we so joy. Jesus, our Lord, we may not seek to be consoled, but to console, nor look to understanding hearts, but look to hearts to understand. We may not look for love's return, but seek to love unselfishly. Dying we live and 
Prayer by St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offence, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring your light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. O Master, let me not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that one receives, it is in self-forgetting that one finds, it is in pardoning that one is pardoned, it is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers by St. Ignatius of Loyola. O Christ Jesus, when all is darkness and we feel our weakness and helplessness, give us the sense of your presence, your love and your strength. Help us to have perfect trust in your protecting love and strengthening power, so that nothing may frighten or worry us. For living close to you, we shall see your hand, your purpose, and your will through all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, teach us to be generous, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to look for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as Jesus taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The response to the words, let us bless the Lord, is thanks be to God. And so let us give thanks to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for the love of our Father, the maker of all, the giver of all good things. Let us bless the Lord. For Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who lived and worked among us, let us bless the Lord. For his suffering and death on the cross and his resurrection to new life, let us bless the Lord. For his rule over all things and his presence in the world, let us bless the Lord. For the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who teaches us and guides us, let us bless the Lord the grace of the Spirit in the work of the Church and the life of the world. Let us bless the Lord. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, raise you up to walk with him in the newness of his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.